This video will briefly cover how to create graphs, charts, and tables in Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. So we'll start out in PowerPoint here, and you can see that we have a table already available, and tables are good for large amounts of data, and sometimes it's easier to use that or it's just too difficult to create a graph. So putting that information in a table is one way of making it accessible to the reader. How to make a table is you go up to the ribbon, click insert, and then where it says table, you can decide how many columns you want and how many rows you want right off the bat, or you can start with something smaller, and then you can add and delete rows after the fact. The column titles will usually go in the box that's often a different color on the very top but you can choose a different style, a different theme, if you would prefer. And you can even create your own styles using the shading and border options so that you can use any color and shading combination. If you need to add lines or delete lines, you would go to the layout tab and you can see that it has delete column or row and then it also has insert rows above, below, to the right, and to the left. Or once you get to the end, the last row, if you hit tab, it'll automatically put in a new row for you. Another way to represent this information that's more visually appealing in this case is to use a pictograph, which uses pictures to represent information. So here we have for every $1 earned by men, women earn a part of a dollar. So this is a dollar that has been cropped to demonstrate the uh, amount that women earn and it's broken down by race and ethnicity. So that's an interesting visually appealing way to get your readers attention. Another type of graph is the line graph which is most commonly used to show trends over time. So here, for example, 2015 through year-to-date 2019, and it's showing a trend over time. The line works particularly well to follow if it's going down, up, consistent, not consistent, etc. Important things here would be to make sure that your y-axis has numbers, information that makes sense to the reader. So if this is the unemployment rate, the percentage here, this would be the unemployment unemployment rate uh, by percentage and you can decide if you want to add another axis title here or if it's self-explanatory. What's also helpful is showing the data numbers by like above below to the side of the data points and how you do that if it's not already in there is going to design add a chart element and you can see data labels and you can decide, do you put them to the left, to the right, above, below, and usually there's a couple options that are just easier. These, for example, cross over the line so they don't look as good, so above or below would make more sense. Here's another graph example, and this one is a stacked bar chart. Um, this is useful for things like number comparison, so oftentimes money is represented this way, and visually it's easy for the reader to follow. Another option is the horizontal bar chart, and this is very common. People are very used to seeing them, understanding this information. So again, it's just about making sure your y-axis has information that your reader can understand, and if it needs it, another label, which in this case I would argue it doesn't. If it's median weekly income and then it's a dollar amount, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then edu educational attainment, we have the options at the bottom here, which is pretty self-explanatory. One thing to be aware of is that data can be somewhat skewed if the graph is too skinny and long or too tall and narrow. Uh, so it's best to make sure that your graph um, is not more than 25% larger 
one way or the other. So here you can see I'm making it shorter uh, horizontally so that it's not as spread out or I can make it taller vertically so that I can have it far enough spread out uh, so that the numbers here do not bleed across the um, bar. The last one here is a pie chart which needs to be used for when you have a hundred percent available or a hole that you're talking about. You can't use it for other types of numbers that don't add up to a hundred percent or a whole. So this one is partially set up here. It would benefit from a little more information. So what you would do is you would click on the chart, go to design, and I'm going to edit the data. So this would let you go in and change any numbers any titles of the data that you have, the overall title of the chart, you could change. What I'm interested in doing here is that the chart itself is just mixed up. There's a big slice, little slice, bigger slice, littler slice. It's, there's no pattern and it's hard for your eye to understand what that means. So all you have to do is go into the data, right click and choose sort and choose smallest to largest or largest to smallest. The most common is to start with your largest and move to the smallest uh, in a clockwise order. So largest to smallest. And that makes it easier for your reader to visually see how big things are and know biggest, slightly smaller, slightly smaller, etc., etc., etc. Another thing that's really useful with pie charts is to have the data included. So again, I would want to go to the chart element and say I want a data label somewhere. So the center uh, might be useful or it might be best to have them on the outside. For this one, I'm going to go with best fit and it will put them all on the inside except for the number uh, the last one, the 2%, doesn't quite fit, so that's best for it to be sticking out. And another thing, if you want to change the color of these, you can, under Format and Shape Fill, you can change the color to whatever you want. So I would either change this dark blue one to a different color, so something lighter that people can actually read it, or I need to change this number so that it is white on a dark background so that people can see it. One of the two. If you're in Microsoft Word, the process is the same. It looks very similar. It's the same product, right? Different uh, programs, but the same company making them. So for example, if I have numbers here that are percentages, I could look at it quick and say, oh, yep, percentages, add it up, make sure it equals 100, and say, okay, the best for this would be a pie chart. So go to Insert, click Chart, choose Pie. It's best not to use 3D graphics, just in general. And then unless it's absolutely necessary, it's best not to use like donuts and um, bars pulled out but just to use a plain pie chart. You would put your information in and then in the design you would add any chart elements that are missing or you could use one of the prefab designs as well. Here's another example. We have a bunch of information. College enrollment over the years. So you'd think about it and you'd say, okay, it's showing trends over time. The best option would be a line graph. So I'll go to insert, chart, and I'm going to pick line. Again, it's best not to get crazy with the 3D. Just use a plain line graph and it's the same information. But notice with the line graph it's giving me three sets of data and I've only got one set I need which is the number of enrolled students or FTE each year. So if I pull this blue line over 
it will change it to just one set of data. And then you can choose if you want to go through and delete. These are not, as long as they're outside of the blue, they will not appear on the chart.